What is game juice? Well, it's something that makes your games juicy. So in all seriousness, game juice is a combination of the little things. It's the small details that make your game feel so good. It's the juice flowing out of your steak. The sad thing about game juice is that it's often not really noticed when a game has it, but when a game doesn't have it, the game feels off. It feels cheap. And you never want your game to feel cheap. You obviously want people to feel like they are getting the premium experience with your product. So how do you add this game juice to your game? Well, there are quite a few ways to juice up your game, but I'll be focusing on three main categories. Responsive feedback, interactive environment, and the last one, I want you to try and guess. Tell me down below in the comments what you think is the third category. And with that said, let's jump straight into the first category, responsive feedback. Responsive feedback is responsible in creating a direct and satisfying connection between the player's action and the game's response. It's about ensuring that every interaction within the game feels impactful, meaningful and satisfying. Nice. All in all, responsive feedback can be grouped into three elements. Impact, which refers to the visual, auditory and sometimes tactile response that occurs when a player interacts with the game world. For example, when a character jumps, lands, hits an enemy or interacts with an object, there should be a noticeable and satisfying reaction. This could be a visual effect, a sound, a screen shake or ideally a mix of all three. The second element is consistency. This basically means ensuring consistency in the feedback your game provides. Once you've established a pattern, you need to make sure that the same level and style of feedback is applied to any other similar action. This helps in building up a sense of familiarity and predictability, which is crucial for your player's immersion. If we take the previous example of Mr. Jellybean's well-deserved faith and swap out the rock for a big log and then drop it... Yeah. That was disappointing, wasn't it? That's how your players will feel if things that have been established don't happen when expected. The last element of responsive feedback is timeliness. This refers to the timing of the feedback. Immediate and appropriately timed responses are crucial. Delayed or out of sync feedback will break immersion and frustrate your players even more than if there was no feedback at all. Out of sync feedback feels kind of like those fake satisfaction videos where right before the satisfying part, they mess it up on purpose. The second category is interactive, non-static environments. This involves creating a game world that reacts and changes in response to your player's action or events within the game. This can either be tied directly to the first category, where when the player cuts a rope, the rock falls, but it can also be more nuanced where if you kill an NPC, the other NPCs you cross in the future might have heard about it and act differently towards you. But that's not all. An interactive environment is also an environment that feels like it's still alive when the player isn't around. This reinforces immersion enormously, creating a connection and intrigue with the player. It's simple, if the environment feels alive and real, your players will take it more seriously and personally. <laughs> this can be again grouped into two overarching groups, starting with dynamic environmental elements. This simply means to incorporate elements that change over time or in response to your player's action. This could be anything from environmental changes like day and night cycle to interactive objects that players can manipulate in some way. For example, if your player killed a dragon like a then he should be from now on treated like a boss. The second element is environmental storytelling. This is achieved by using the environment itself to tell a story or provide context, enhancing the player's engagement with the game world. A very obvious way to do this would be to have two NPCs discuss the mysterious murder of Mr. Jellybean and then add more context like the fact that he liked young boys. Yeah, let's do this one more time, shall we? One game that I've always admired for its environmental storytelling is Escape from Tarkov. Escape from Tarkov is an extraction shooter and it's very common to find little stories throughout their world. Like this room that has a little hole on this side and if you go to the other side you'll find a room with a very sus Mayo stain on the wall which indicates that at some point somebody was Now to the final mystery category sound design. One of my most favorite topics is sound design. Sound design plays such a crucial role in game juice by adding depth and realism to the game world. It involves more than just background music. It's about how every sound contributes to the overall experience. Almost everything in your world should have some sort of sound. But like we did in the previous two categories, this again can be grouped into two elements. Environmental audio, creating a soundscape that reflects the environment of the game, including ambient sounds, character voices, and sound effects that change with 
context and feedback through sound using audio cues to provide feedback for player action such as the sound of footsteps changing on different surfaces the clash of swords or an old screeching door opening as a youtuber i've played with sound design quite a bit and just by adding a few sounds here and there i can elevate the experience of my videos enormously but this is even more the case with games so yeah game juice can be incredibly powerful to add immersion and a polished premium feel to a game but if you don't understand the fundamentals of fun your game might still flop luckily i've made a videos covering exactly that topic so click right here